guys. Happy Saturday morning. I wanted to show you uh, the inspiration for the card that we have today. It's an Animal Kingdom inspired card because I just thought it was so cute. So my friend <clears throat> um, Candy had me um, uh, had me make this card at her class a few weeks ago. And even though I can't replicate this card exactly, I wanted to show you the inspiration and how I did it with a few different supplies. And so it's super cute, right? So um, she used the diorama dies, which are retiring. I'm not even sure if they're still available. She also was able to add the, um, the cool dies. These were not available when I ordered. So I'm going to have to order these later because look at how much it adds to the tree, you know, to the card by having that. Luckily, these little butterflies are carrying over the little brushed butterflies. This paper is retiring. Um, so I had to make my own version. Good morning, Marsha. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so this is the version I made, but I'm actually going to change it up because I don't really like how it turned out. I feel like it could be a little bit better. So um, <coughs> we're going to add, you guys are going to add some more stuff with me. So, um, so here is... Um, this Rhino set is called Rhino Ready, and it is in the online exclusives. And so, like I said, this is the card um, that I made with Candy. Cute, right? And it's it's a fancy fold. I never do fancy folds for you. <coughs> um, and so I wanted to make sure you could see what my inspiration was and how I could still do the similar card, but with a little different stuff. So we'll, we'll re revisit this in a minute. So, and I also, oh no, not on that one. Okay, so she did, we did a couple cards with her. So this is my inspiration. Let me get my little basket. Here's my Cinderella basket with all my supplies in it. Here's my little tester. And let me get our stamp set out. Um, we need one of these. And, oh, I gotta grab the, um, I gotta grab the glue. There's, it's several sheets of cardstock, as you can see. And, or, okay, there we go. I think I've got everything. All right, so we're using the Rhino Ready, right? So, it's so cute and really versatile. I mean, a really versatile card. Um, and I love this one with the little bird. And I just thought it was really fun. The cool thing is the dies will cut out, <clears throat> I believe, this uh, Rhino and this grass some of the embellishments. I'm not sure if it cuts out this rhino, but I'm pretty sure it cuts out this one. And so it does cut out a few of the rhinos, but maybe not all of them. Um, as soon as I get those dies, I'll show them to you and show you how I had a, how I worked them. Then I decided to use, uh, well, she used the um, like an animal paper, <clears throat> which is so pretty. And again, it's retiring. It didn't go on sale. So most of it is, I'm pretty sure it's still available. I bought an extra package because I just felt like I could keep doing other Animal Kingdom type cards with it. So I might even buy one more pack um, for future, you know, stamp sets or more cards with this even. And so I'm using the zebra piece. Um, it's, it's 12 by 12. This is just a sampling that I happen to have handy to show you. The foil on it. Oh, and the back sides. I didn't show you the back sides. The back sides, what's cool is that it's a replication of the front, but just with colors, which is really unusual. Many times the B sides are, um, <clears throat> the B sides are like something plain, but this is actually the same. So I could still use this, you know, alligator type, you know, design and just not have foil, which is cool sometimes too. Sometimes it's ni nice to use the B side. And so really pretty. I have used um, quite a bit of the one I have. Um, and so we're using this piece today. And so, the, I mean, this it's a really versatile DSP. I love the, DS, the zebra pages too, uh, um, <clears throat> Marsha. And so, okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started with our basic design. We'll do the rhino next because that one requires some coloring. I need to get a piece of paper. Oh, I forgot to put a piece of paper down for my coloring. 
Um, all right, so we're gonna glue together Uh, this is basic gray and uh, gray granite. So uh, this is five and a half by four and a quarter for the first layer. And the second layer is um, four inches by five and a quarter. Okay. And for this layer, it's the same thing, but we're going to be doing a little pull out okay. and I'm gonna I'm gonna glue the foil side down which you know not everyone wants to do that but I like this foil side or this plain flat zebra against this plain gray. We're gonna add some silver, we're just gonna add it later. So I didn't have the diorama dies. I think those might be sold out actually, but I'm not quite sure, you can check. The ones that my friend Candy used were these diorama dies. <clears throat> I didn't have these, <clears throat> but I did have the circle dies, which are also retiring. So I went ahead and I cut out a circle. I actually cut out a bigger circle. You can see on my original one, I used a smaller one and I realized later, I think I want it bigger. And so that's one thing I changed up is I wanted more silver showing. It still looks fine, but it just looks a little better, I think, with more. Um, so that's the basics of that. So then what we did here is we, this is three inches by 11 inches. Um, oh, I thought it was 11. Yeah, it is 11. And I scored it at, let me start with the short one. I scored it at two inches and I scored it at six and a half inches. Okay. So that's how I made sure I got the right. Um, so two inches and six and a half inches is where I scored it. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to be making, this is going to be where I stamp. Okay. So see, this is going to go on the inside. So I'm gonna fold this one forward. Oh, I think my fold's a little crooked. Well, I can fix that with the little bone folder. I had, I, I had a feeling I had folded it a little crooked actually when I had done it. That's a good way to catch it. So there we go. So now it's straight. So I'm folding that forward, then I, I'm folding the little one back word. So like it's a little Z, a little Z shape. It's called an extender card or, you know, there's different things people call it. And I'm going to stamp, um, I'm gonna stamp a couple things. So first, I thought it was so fun. My friend Jeanette was so cute when we were doing these together. She stamped little birds on the inside of the card like willy nilly, like they were dancing. So it looked almost like they were dancing across the bottom of the card, which I thought was so fun. She also did it on the envelope, which I thought was super fun. Um, and then <clears throat> I went ahead and I'm gonna stamp, hope your birthday is wild. Now you can stamp it up in the center or the side. I think I'm gonna try and stamp it in the center. Let me see if I can get it centered. Yeah, that's okay. It's a little crooked. So again, a little trick when you have a slightly crooked sentiment. Add another stamp to the side of the sentiment and it throws off the eye so they can't see it's crooked. Just letting you know that's a trick. A tried and true trick that I've used for years and years and it always works. Then um, let me grab a a piece of paper, I realized I don't have any. Oh, there's one. I was like, I didn't have my, well, this is my mat. I had pulled it up because I had, had been doing a reel. And so I haven't been putting the reels, uh, it, putting the paper like this in the reels. Um, so now I'm gonna take my parakeet party. I'm gonna take the dark parakeet party Whoa, whoa. And I'm gonna add it to the wing and the tail. I 
I guess it can add it to that wing too. That wing barely gets seen. Okay, then I'm gonna take my uh, light pumpkin pie. I'm gonna dab the beak. That's how you get the to color the tiny spots. Sometimes you just dab it. You don't have to actually, <clears throat> excuse me, color, color it. Um, many times just a dab will do. Okay, that's the light one. Let me, I've missed a spot here. There we go. Then we're going to take my light parakeet party. I just like this green with the, I like the green with this little bird. And I think with the tree on the other card, it looked so cute, really added to it. There we go. All right, so we've got our little birds. <clears throat> then we're gonna, remember you have to put a piece of paper underneath your, uh, you have to put a piece of paper underneath your, um, good morning, Holly. You have to put a piece of paper underneath uh, your uh, blends when you're coloring because it will stain your table. Okay, so now here's the tricky part. Fold it all back as best you can, as flat as you can, and do your best to center it. This was a little tricky to figure out when I was first doing it. And so, here we go. That looks good. Attaching this other piece is a little harder, but okay. And so now we have our, our, it ready to extend open. So cute, right? And then, oh darn, I glued that down already. And I wanted to put some, darn it, I glued that down. And I wanted to put a, I'll have to fix that here. I've got a spare because I was changing the design a little bit. Sorry guys, my bad. So this was my spare that I'm going to do for my reel. So good thing I had a backup. So I'll use this for another card. Don't worry. I just, while I'm showing you the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue just the zebra to this because I want to do, um, well, I'll do that in a minute because I want to do, um, add some more because as you can see, my design is fine. I like the design that Candy made, and I think that tree really adds to such a great design, right? It adds such a cute piece, but um, I thought, you know, mine is just a little too plain. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It just needs a little oomph for a fabulous stamper style, you know? And so that's my goal. So we're going to add a little extra oomph, and I'll do that next. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp my rhino onto my circle. And these circles are from the circle die. Let me grab them just to make sure you know the sizes. These two circles are, oh, there's my ruler. Okay, I use the large scallop, which is three inches wide. And I use the circle that is two, it looks like it's two and, a half, so one, two, three, four, five eighths. It looks like it's two and five eighths, almost two and three quarters actually when you really look at it. So just letting you know. So that those are the circles that I used and these dies are, are retiring. So if you don't have these dies, I recommend you get them because they are helpful. I'm sure that Stampin' Up! will come out with something that's similar, but for now we won't have that. Let me make sure I, I left my rhino sitting to the side. Okay, whoops, stop. There we go. All right, so now remember when you're using the rubber stamp, you just kiss it to the paper and then you get a nice clean image. I haven't been the best at doing that where I'll smash it down by mistake. 
because uh, I'm just not used to using the rubber ones as often as I use others. So you just kiss it and that's it. Um, and so now I'm going to color. So when I colored my Rhino, uh, I wanted to make sure that it still was gray. See, this one had a lot lighter color, but they use like crumb cake and some other colors. So I, I was just using the colors that I had. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the, um, I do the darks first. So I don't need the orange anymore. I don't need pumpkin pie anymore. So I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to put a little bit of brown around these little edges. Just the little creases of his little body. I don't know. I just decided that that's where brown would be. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of brown on his tail. Okay. And then... <clears throat> um, I put um, a little bit of this, um, oh, here's my guide. I used 800 on the horn. Eight hundred on the horn and light gray granite. I kept confusing the two. Sorry, here's my little guide. I kept getting them mixed up when they were next to each other because the markers look so much. Okay, light gray granite. I just liked how the the neutral eight hundred color, the the natural blend, just shades that gray just a little bit different. And you can see when I hold it up closer. You see how the shading of that horn is just a little bit different than the rest of the body because the horns are different colors, you know? And so I just wanted that little different shade. And so that's what it looks like. In this case, it's really light. I used a different one. So you see it's gray, but it's also brown, okay? So then we're gonna go ahead and take the light smoky slate. I'm not using any dark. I'm just using the light. And then I'm just adding some shading to, um, I think I put made this smoky slate. And then I'm just adding some shading I think I colored it and then Then I take the light gray granite and I build out from there a little bit more. This is kind of what I did when I made those Doritos or the, the, the tortillas. I just, you know, went from darker to lighter, and then I used one of these neutrals. I'm gonna use this again, but when you add the neutral on top, it adds a whole nother, oops, went out of the line, hang on. Let me get my, luckily it's a light color, but I went out of the line just a little bit. And so usually the color lifter is gonna, cause it's pure alcohol, it's usually gonna lift that out. Okay, so then what you do is you take the 800 and you're gonna color the whole, oh God, I almost thought this was orange for a minute. You're gonna color the whole body. Don't worry, I'm not done. I'm not gonna make him a, a white rhino. And then let me get his um, toes here. I just kept the toes with the 800. I kept them. 
They're probably dark gray or something, but I don't know. I just didn't want that. Okay. And I think, okay, I think I'm almost done here. Now I take the light gray granite. On my sample here, I used the dark by mistake and see how dark he got. It didn't, it wasn't really what I wanted. And so let me get the tail first. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and color over the whole thing again with the light gray granite. Yeah, light gray granite. This is where blends actually really do make a difference in making your image have a lot more color. And so he's just got a little bit more, a little bit more gray. Let me let that dry for a second. Let me do my bird. I love this little tiny bird. It's so cute. I used to have a bird. She was a sun conure, which means she was like the size of a parakeet, but it was from the it was from the um, parrot family, but she was real small, like a parakeet. parakeet. Oh, thanks, Marsha. I just try my best, Marsha. All right, I think I might need to add a little bit more of the dark slate or the light slate. I just want a little bit more shading here on his, his back, just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. I don't know. I just felt like it needed it. I'm going to add a little bit more of that brown. Maybe a little brown here. Then again, we're going to use that natural on it to just lighten it a bit. And then we're going to use the light gray granite to really shade it down but it just adds a little bit of texture to the color. All right, and once again, I went outside the line because I got too overzealous here. Good, it's picking up. That one too, it's picking up right away. Okay, good, so there we go. So that's our little, so that's our hip, uh, our rhino. And so he's got a little brown, you know what I mean? But he's also gray. I could probably make him even darker if I wanted, but I did just feel like he needs, you know, he just needed a little bit of different shading so he wasn't just a plain gray, you know, rhino, you know? And I think that the natural, adding that natural 800 color really gives a different look. So here's the original one that I did. It's pretty close, you know, they're gonna be a little different every time. Um, he's a little bit lighter brown, but you know, still, it, it works. I feel like it works, so there you go. All right, so we're done with our rhino. So now we're gonna glue it down onto our circle. And this is the part why I messed up on the layers, because I think I'm gonna add some ribbon just to try and make the card a little less plain. There we go. And so, and you see, I practiced on my sample, you know, so it's good I did it on my sample to kind of, and I needed my guide to remember which colors were which, and I, you know, learned a few mistakes from doing it this way. So I usually do a sample first. That's usually how I do it. My hot cocoa got cold. 
I forgot I had made it before I sat down. <laughs> so I th what I think I'm going to do, let me glue these layers together. What I think I'm going to do Okay, so I think, so I'm gonna put my basic gray down, but I don't wanna glue it to my front yet. I think I'm gonna either put, I might do my trick again and wrap it more than once. Okay, let's see how this looks first. Eh, it looks okay. I think actually maybe this way would be better. And I might do the same thing that I did last time and wrap it twice with the pool party. Oh yeah, that adds a lot more shine, you know? Cause it just needed a little something extra to bulk it, you know, to where it just felt a little more, just a little more finished. This looks fine. But I think it's, um, yeah, I always do the sample coloring first, Marsha, that's best. Um, but you know, just to make it, to pop it a little bit more, I added extra silver, so that adds a little bit more blank, bling, but I think also adding, adding more of this ribbon makes it nice. So let me try it, let me wrap it. And this is on clearance, guys, this, uh, what is this called? Metallic mesh. I only started using this ribbon in the last couple months. You know, people always used it at, um, oh, you know what else I can try? That's a, let me try one more thing first, because actually this makes a fantastic bow. Hold on, let me try that first before I move on to my traditional strip. So this ribbon makes fantastic bows. So let's see. Let's see if I can get it. And just see what it looks like. It makes really good puffy bows. You see how it makes such a nice puffy bow? That might be what I want to add. Let's see. I kind of like that. As opposed to just wrapping it again and again. I kind of like that bow, and it's a birthday card, you know what I mean? And so, oh, that I think that might be what I want. I think that's what I want, as opposed to just the traditional strip. I'm gonna wrap it in, um, wrap it around. So let me go ahead and grab my fabric scissors. Oops, my fabric scissors have gone wayward. We'll do this for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna do a bow. I like that. This, it is really good ribbon for bows. And actually, part of me wants to do it like off to the side. We'll see. It just makes such good big bows. It's a little loose. Okay, here's my other trick when you have a loose bow. It makes a nice big bow, which I love. You just gotta fluff out the layer again, okay? Fluff out the little. But here's my trick when my bows are too loose on the card. My trick is I literally pull it tight and cinch it on the back of the card, on the back. Who knew you were gonna get so many tips today? So I, that's all I do to try and make sure that my, the front stays nice and taut. Let me make sure, oh, it's a little off center. I need it centered, my bad. Okay. Yeah, it makes really good knots. It makes really good ribbon, uh, really good bows. I didn't think I'd like it for something like that, but it actually is really good for that. I'll trim this off here in a sec. 
but you see how it makes such a nice shiny little look to it, you know? Let me make sure it's tight. And then that way I can spread out my little edging a little bit. Okay. And so, and that's how you get it tight around the back is you just make sure that you add extra tape. I'm gonna add another piece here. And just, it just cinches it. All you're doing is just making a seam essentially in the back that's holding down. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I've got like four pieces on here, but that's okay. Normally it doesn't take that much, but it's such a wide ribbon, you know? So, um, so yeah, so there's our nice little basic front and let me trim off my edges here. I don't know. Normally I hold them together and trim. I wonder if that'll work on this ribbon in the same way. Probably. I think so. Yeah, there we go. And then I can add my dimensionals right here and pop my little rhino up. Okay, so let me glue my card down. And that's it for our card. Oh, well, we got to attach it. attach it to the card front there we go yeah and this I mean this is all on clearance this stuff so I think this is only like three dollars or something it was real popular in the fall and uh, in the fall of last not last year two years ago this ribbon was real popular and they carried it over and then so and now I'm gonna add my little uh, dimensionals and pop my little uh, thing up. Let's see. I put my dimension. I'm going somewhere later, so I put my dimensionals to the side. So same with my fabric scissors. Here we go. Luckily, I have an extra pen. Hope you guys are doing good today. It's an early Saturday morning. I um, I didn't have my Friday, so I'm like, we'll do a fabulous Saturday morning. I'm on my way to my friend's house. We're gonna make a vision board. And so, well, I have an appointment first, then I'll go make vision boards with her, uh, a vision board with her. And my fabulous stamper team Oh, on Christmas cards too. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought of Christmas, but I guess the silver would be good, wouldn't it? Yep. Looks about straight. And so cute, right? I think that adds like a nice little... Okay, so now for the top one, top part. I put tear and tape often. I often put tear and tape on these type of folding cards. This is the first time I'm going to try the white because I don't want my thing to come off, but it's also tricky to get it on there um, and centered, you know what I mean? So the white glue might still be the best option. Just because you're gonna be moving it, sliding it open. Whoopsie, there we go. Now, I, well, that seemed to work. So let me make sure, let me open it and press down extra on the inside. Okay, it seems to be even. <clears throat> and so I kind of still want to add a couple pebbles. I had to be careful of adding the pebbles because if I... Oh, I see. Um, what's it called? I was kind of hesitant about it adding the pebbles because the brown ones look a little like poop. And so, I mean, it's an Animal Kingdom card. So, you know... I mean, it's not unheard of that the animals will poop somewhere. So, but I thought it would be just kind of fun to have a couple of the rocks, you know, uh, close. And I, I, I liked having the brown ones because it, it added to the brown of the rhino. See, there's a method to my madness, lazy ladies. I, I have a, and let me put, put the gray one first because I found that putting, oh, 
There's a different color gray down here. Let me put this gray one. Okay. There's two different grays. I thought there was just one gray. It's, it's slate and, uh, looks like it's slate and granite. Okay, and then let's put this one here. You know what would have been kind of cute is if you did, you know, one of those uh, Zen towers with it. It's too late. It's on there now. I was thinking, you know how you can do those, you know, those little towers where they stack all the three little rocks on top? That might have been fun. Okay, and let me put, I'm going to put one that's a little different next to it. There we go. Just little rocks. I thought that was fun. So that's our card. It's much shinier. <clears throat> Um, I love these pebbles. They're on clearance for only $3 and I bought three packs. I don't know how I'm going to use all those pebbles, but I make, I feel like I make a lot of masculine cards, like with those wildlife wonder. And then here, you know, again, so here is the card that I made. So here's the original card from candy. I mean, super cute, right? And she added the, the sentiment to the front and the tree really makes a difference if you get those dies. This is the diorama die. Well, I didn't have that, and they were sold out of the dies for, for the hit. These dies go with the rhino, just so you know. So if you buy the bundle, you save 10%, and um, they go together. Um, and she added a happy birthday on the inside, and I decided I'd do something different. The pebbles, yes, those pebbles are sold separately. They're in the clearance rack right now, Holly. And you can find them, they're only like $3. Um, and you can find them in the clearance rack. They they were from last year, last spring, a previous spring. Mm -hmm. And so I had a pack still hanging around and then I bought more when they were on clearance. Um, and then this is the one that I did yesterday, right? Or Thursday I made. And But you see how it just needed a little, you know, just needs a little sum. To, to just add to that zebra. Maybe if it had been the foil zebra, it would have been fine. But then adding this ribbon and see the shine of the ribbon. I don't know. I, I like how that added just a little something more to the card. But yet you can still see all the zebra, you know? And so I like that bow. I think that that adds a great touch to it. Um, so even though I didn't have the dies, I still was able to make the best. And then the little pebbles are just cute, right? I was going to put one over here and then I realized it looked too much like poop. Like I told you, I had one. And as, as soon as I set it down, I'm like, no, I need to move it over because I didn't want it to look like poop on my card. Um, if that's what you want, you can add that, but I just didn't want to do that. So yeah, so yeah, so here's my original and here's my little stepped up looking version. And so, um, and adding more foil, I think also made a big difference. More foil on the outside, silver foil, using the larger circle, I think made a big difference. And so, yeah, so those are my cute little cards. So, and oh, and I forgot to show you the inside and how cute is the inside there? You know, I mean, just so fun to have that on the inside. I liked using that on the inside as opposed to putting a sentiment on the outside. And the little birds dancing across the bottom to me were just my favorite thing. I mean, how cute are they? I mean, they're so cute, you know? And I, you know, they're just lightly colored, you know? Just a fun little card, you know? I like them both too. I think on this one, you know what I might do on this one? I might add a sentiment you know, just across the top so that it has a little more, like maybe happy birthday, you know, just a plain happy birthday across it. And then, you know, we've got the inside. And so just a plain, oh, you see this one I had straight. You see this one I got straight. So I didn't add a bird. But see, because this one was a little bit crooked, I added the bird and then you don't know it's crooked. See, because you're, you're looking at the bird instead of at the words. See, I'm smart. Work smarter, not harder, ladies. So, 
Well, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. As always, your support is always so appreciated. And, um, you know, thanks so much for always being so supportive. And Holly and I had a great little team meeting the other day. If you guys are interested in joining my team, we have meetings once a month. And we just craft and chit chat and talk about the new things that are coming out with the catalog. And, um, you know, of course, I send you a Disney gift because I can. And you'd be a fabulous stamp stamper. Well, I'm glad I shared that little bit of joy first thing in the morning for you, Marsha. And um, I hope you have a great day too, Holly. Thanks so much for tuning in, ladies. And have a good Saturday. All right, bye-bye.